The Flash is finally opening in a few short days, but will it have you running out of the theater? I'll tell you right now. This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Go to expressvpn.com slash Merle to find out how to get three months free and stay tuned after this review for more info. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Merle and this is my review for The Flash, one of the final projects in the DC Universe as it stands cinematically and one of the most delayed. The Flash is directed by Andy Muschietti in his first film since the two-parter It films wrapped up in 2019. Screenplay credit goes to Bumblebee and Birds of Prey writer Christina Hodson with story credit shared by Dungeons and Dragon writers John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein and Obi-Wan Kenobi writer Joby Harold. Although for as long as this movie has been in development, there are likely many, 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 many more writers who have had their fingerprints on the script. Now, this is a non-spoiler review, but what that basically means is that I will not reference any character or story point that has not already been revealed in some kind of a trailer or marketing or promotion material. However, if you want to go in completely blind, then it's probably best that you not watch this review or, quite frankly, any reviews, because there is a discussion of the story points as we know them that are inherent to just about every review. Having said that, The Flash is a loose adaptation of the Flashpoint storyline, which finds Barry Allen traveling back in time using the Speed Force to save his mother and, by extension, his father, who's wrongfully imprisoned for her murder. This results in some unintended timeline changes, including a new reality where Batman is now Michael Keaton again, and Superman's cousin Kara is now the Kryptonian on Earth, which is once again being menaced by Michael Shannon's General Zod. A solo Flash movie was originally supposed to be released over five years ago. This has been a very long road to movie theaters, but I think the delay has bought it one thing, which is the ability to not have to explain to the audience inside and outside of this movie exactly what a multiverse is because so many other properties have now done that. But this advantage also comes with the flip side because I do think that the approach for this story cinematically would have felt a little bit more fresh a few years ago. I mean, this is coming out, after all, one week after another comic book film that also featured a multiverse, a few months after a Best Picture winner that featured a multiverse, and one summer after the MCU officially kicked off their multiverse. Yes, the Flashpoint story publication-wise, certainly had a jump on all of these, but cinematically, this Flash is following in the footsteps of many other franchises before it. Luckily, though, this does not feel like a retread because The Flash has a lot of great things going for it. The first is a sense of fun from the very first frame of the film. And honestly, I think it would be silly to treat a character like The Flash too seriously. And the lighter moments of the film do give way to the film's naturally dramatic ones, of which there are many. There are a few times when the movie threatens to get a little too goofy. There is an early sequence that really didn't work for me, again, largely because I think it went a little bit too far and because of some dodgy special effects in the sequence itself. However, it soon pulled me back, and for the rest of the film, I felt like it modulated the tones pretty well. Of course, at the center of The Flash is Ezra Miller, and just to very briefly address this, the discussion of art and artist and the separation of the two is a very complex discussion. I will say that anything that happened off screen has absolutely no bearing on my opinion of this film or Ezra Miller's performance in this movie. Briefly, I will say that I hope that restitution is paid where it is deemed appropriate, and I also hope that Miller continues their journey towards recovery as they have reported themselves. Ultimately, your feelings about Ezra Miller and whether or not to watch this movie is in your hands, but I did want to mention it briefly before I continued with the review because because I think it bears mentioning. The truth is that Miller is very much at the center of this film. It's not just one Barry Allen, but two, and they are very good in this movie. After such a rocky road for The Flash, it's good to see the character given a consistent characterization and some room to build out apart from the Justice League. The older Barry carries the weight of a past he's trying to erase, while the younger Barry has a goofy energy that Miller nails without going too over the top. By the end, I really liked this version of Barry Allen, and it's such a cruel twist of fate that after finally hitting theaters, we are now faced with the potential that this version of The Flash could be erased from the DC Universe altogether. I know the hope has been that this would be some kind of a Rosetta Stone, a path to the future road of the DC Universe ahead. I didn't exactly get that out of this film, and I think it is still very much in question just what the future holds for all of these characters. Warner Brothers has shown a lot of faith in this movie. They've been doing 
free public screenings all over the place to get fans excited. And then, of course, there was the early, early screening at CinemaCon, the national convention for cinema owners. And there was a rapturous response to the film there, which I feel has set hopes and expectations for this movie very, very high. But hopes and expectations are a tricky thing, and I fear that this movie is being burdened too much with both, and thus may be deemed a disappointment by somebody who maybe wouldn't have had such high hopes if it weren't hyped so much. The Flash is a good movie, a fun superhero romp featuring familiar faces, some new characters, and a few great surprises, especially for DC superfans, but I didn't find it to be the greatest superhero movie ever made, as the head of Warner Discovery has described, nor did I respond nearly as strongly as many of the people who first saw the movie at CinemaCon, who described it as the best DC film ever made, or one of the best comic book movies ever made. I didn't fall to my knees in rapturous joy, tears streaming out of my eyes, praising the heavens that this Flash movie has finally been delivered to me. I just thought that it was good. It was fun. But I feel my less than orgasmic response may be taken as me saying I didn't like the movie, and that's actually not true. I think it's good, not great, and its strength lies largely in the performances. Miller is worthy of this role and of their own movie. Keaton is obviously enjoying himself as this alt-future version of Batman. And Sasha Kaye makes a strong impression as Supergirl with the weight of two worlds on her shoulders. But for me, that extra level... That level that goes beyond just seeing these characters on screen and going like, oh, okay, that's cool, really just wasn't there. They almost seemed kind of like window dressing to the thing that works the best in this movie, which is Barry's story. That's where the heart of the film is, and when the movie focuses on that story, it works. The other DC characters feel like they're there almost as a marketing strategy, which has come in handy as Miller recedes from the public spotlight. The look of the film is a bit of a mixed bag. I liked how they showed the Flash's powers and how they're depicted. The Speed Force in particular is very uniquely and memorably designed. But the movie's cartoonish aesthetic often had me looking at the visual effects and trying to figure out, are they supposed to look so fake or are they just not quite ready for prime time. Most of the time I settled on the latter, and in a couple of sequences I thought that the effects were distractingly bad, although I will say again, in some other places I thought they were actually quite good. This movie was never designed to be the fulcrum on which the entire DC universe pivoted. I mean, the change in corporate strategy happened long after this movie wrapped principal photography back at the end of 2021. It's a good movie. It's in the upper tier of the DCEU easily. It's funny and full of solid character work for Barry, and I can't fault the performances. And it does pay homage to the DC universe, not just from the past decade, but for all time, with some payoffs that actually did have me shake my head and laughing because there are some things that have been set up for a very long time that you finally do get to see in this film and most of them haven't been spoiled some of them have been and not by people that saw the movie already but by some creatives involved in the film and if you haven't read interviews with anybody involved in the film I recommend don't start now because there were a couple of things that I wish I hadn't known about going in that were talked about openly in the media I guess as a way to help build the hype I mean I think that the studio is already doing a pretty good job of that. But I do fear that audience members going in expecting to be monumentally shaken to their core as the best movies are capable of doing might be a little disappointed. I think DC super fans will love it. I think comic book movie fans will like it. And I think it'll be enjoyable for a general audience, but I don't think it's gonna be one of those movies that's going to win everybody over. Anecdotal evidence from the audience I saw the movie with, which was a mix of critics and then some fans that were there for an early screening, was that the movie was enjoyable, but I also got a very heavy sense of disappointment because it wasn't quite as good as they'd been told that it was. And so this would be my main message going into this film, untether yourself from the huge expectations that other people have already saddled onto this movie, and just go in expecting a good time, because if that's what you go in looking for, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Generally, it is a recommendation for me on The Flash. I think it is a fun superhero film that gets the spirit of the character right, and it's a movie that I enjoyed, if not loved. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to the film after its long journey to theaters? Let me know down in the comments below. And before we go, I want to thank the sponsor for this video, ExpressVPN.
You know, using the internet without ExpressVPN is like being on a Zoom with your coworkers and talking to your friends in the room about those flash spoilers from that early screening you saw last night. Sure, you saw it early, but now all of your coworkers have had the movie ruined. Well, your browsing information is kind of like the flash spoilers of the internet, and if it's shared, it can ruin your online experience. The truth is that internet service providers know every single website you visit, and they can sell this information to ad companies who then use your data to target you. ExpressVPN VPN takes that information and reroutes it through an encrypted tunnel so that your internet service provider can't see or sell your online activity. All you have to do is open the app and click one button and ExpressVPN works on phones, laptops, even routers so that everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected. I love having a VPN for travel because whether I'm on my phone at an airport or using my laptop at a hotel, nobody can track what I'm doing and at home. It's nice to know that my browsing information stays home with me and doesn't go anywhere else. Protect your online privacy today by visiting expressvpn.com slash Merle. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Merle, M-U-R-R-E-L-L, and you can get an extra three months free expressvpn.com slash Merle. Thanks to ExpressVPN and thank you for watching. I'll be back very soon with a review of Transformers Rise of the Beasts, which will be opening this weekend. And then next weekend, once The Flash is actually open, I will have a full spoiler review and there's a lot to talk about. Thank you so much for spending part of your day here with me. Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.